May I welcome all of our viewers on YouTube, as well as our viewers at home, to the service here at Eastminster United Church in Belleville, Ontario. It's the 30th of June, the day before the 146th birthday of our country. And so we're celebrating and remembering all that God has done for us here in this place. We just heard, to God be the glory, and we thank you for that. Shall we pray? Beloved and blessed God, accept these words as we think together about what it means to be Canadians and to have the good fortune to be knowledgeable about your Son, Jesus Christ. In the name of God, amen. <clears throat> I have one question to ask you, and uh, you probably know the answer very quickly. Where were your ancestors on July the 1st, 1867? Is this something you've thought about today as we prepare to celebrate the 146th anniversary of a nation, our nation? We're people from all over the globe. We're grateful for the individuals and families before us who left their roots elsewhere to come and to be a part of a fabric of this new land that is called Canada. We're a society of immigrants and refugees, joining our First Nations people to create our unique space. We're grateful to those who had the vision to drop their regional loyalties, to join together in this great experiment of confederation from coast to coast to coast. Now, many of these leaders dream big dreams, able to imagine a railroad flanked by hotels across the vast prairies and the formidable Rocky Mountains, a Rideau Canal carved out to create a waterway for defense and commerce, and an immigration policy that opened up the world to come and to populate this vast land. So I ask you again, do you remember or do you know where your ancestors were on July 1st, 1867? Some of them may even have been here. People came and currently come from every part of the globe to join those of us here who believe there are opportunities here for a better life for their families and a peaceful and accepting environment of all people, men and women, whatever their, society, their social position might be. But are we as welcoming as we say we are? Have we as individual Canadians gone out of our way to not only welcome but to get to know the newcomers of this land? It's an open question. For all who came to this land before as and for those currently arriving, the concept of a free land is still very appealing. A tremendous cost. People uproot themselves to come here to hopefully flourish in freedom and to provide a better life for their children. I entitled this, this time of, of speaking, Freedom is Never Free, because freedom is not free and it can easily slip from our hands. We need to guard it, as our anthem says, and we need to hold one another we have to need to hold one another accountable, including our politicians, for the actions that may erode this freedom. One of the great freedom fighters of the last century was undoubtedly Martin Luther King, Jr. He ultimately gave his life for his beliefs, as we know, and for his actions to bring about justice, social justice for blacks and others who were at the bottom of society in the United States and probably throughout the world. He urged all humanity, especially his fellow Christians, to be diligent about the task of social justice. King stated, as Sir John A. Macdonald may well have said it, as he rallied the colonies to confederation, this was his phrase, we may have all come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. King said that many times. And when you think about that, that's powerful. We may all come on different ships, and we have, but we're all in the same boat now. Kay read our scripture lesson this morning from Paul's lesson to the Galatians, chapter 5, speaking as clearly as King did to the rest of us. Remember these words of Paul, and I quote, Freedom is what we have. Christ has set us free. Stand then as free people and do not allow yourselves to become slaves again. End of the quote. This was his call for all people to jealously guard the freedom and to work towards emancipation for all men and women wherever they may reside. Not a popular theme 
in the time in which he lived. St. Cla Paul clearly understood that the fate of the Christian church was in the hands of the believers, all the believers, who must be willing to take a stand for their faith and be unafraid to drop some of the prejudices they had, their dislikes, their angers, to share the faith with other seekers. The call to freedom and social justice is not a call to indifference or a call to laid-back action. Another one of King's great sayings was this, those who love peace, those who love peace, must learn to organize as effectively as those who love war. He said to the people in the United States in particular, it isn't going to come because somebody else will bring it for us. We all have to be people who love peace, people who want to love one another and to create a better society. The fight for justice is fundamental to the faith of all people around the world. For to believe in any God is to believe that the God who created all people men and women, created them equal with potential and the right to a decent and a full life. King often talked about dark times. And as others before him, he believed that dark times need not be a reason for the fight for justice to end. Again, one of his quotes about darkness, when he said this, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. End of quote. It's easy to believe this, but it's hard for us to act, often when we're feeling we're in a time of darkness. And again, he said this about the times of darkness and darkness itself. Only in the darkness can you see the stars. He was a powerful man in his statement the words that he said, and so were some of the founders of our country. Powerful statements summed up in a short way to remind us of our humanity and God's expectation of us. Darkness is not a good enough reason for people of faith to be inactive and complacent. It applies to those of us who are Canadians to work to ensure freedom remains a fundamental reality in our day and for the future. And again, quoting King, the time is always right to do the right thing. If I cannot do great things, I can do small things in a great way. Very biblical, very much the story of those who have written our Gospels. Our own founders of Canadian Federation, Sir John A. Macdonald, George Brown, George Etienne Cartier, Hector Langevin, Alexander Galt, Charles Tupper, to name but a few, and the colonial secretary in London, Edward Cardwell, were convinced that the impossibility of bringing all the colonies together in this land was possible and necessary in spite of geography and the history of the area. They had a dream and were prepared to do the right thing in spite of the uncertainty of their times makes me think of a final quote from King. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that really matter. This theme of the cost of inaction is a powerful one, and it's biblical. Each of the leaders in the formation of Canada paid a huge price with the electorate and the virulent views of the opposition to Confederation. I was reading some articles about Sir Johnny MacDonald and others, and we're very prone to look back at these times and highlight the weaknesses of each player. Few can speak of Sir Johnny MacDonald without mentioning in a critical tone his love of drink and his shortness of temper with some who criticized him for his so-called high-handed ways. Perhaps he, as many others, would not have been successful today as we expect and follow eagerly media coverage of their work and personal lives of, of them as decision makers. However, these men and women in the mid-19th century were prepared to dream big dreams, to give up some of their cherished power for the act of creating something new. So who are we to judge their mistakes from the vantage point of history? and our own record often 
of unwillingness to act boldly for the good of all citizens. And we need to remind ourselves that what these less than perfect, very human leaders created became the land of hope for our ancestors and for us and our children. Canada as an entity is not only a reality, but still with so many possibilities to enable it to become even a greater land of justice and peace and hope. The message for us as Canadians is not only to guard what we have, what makes Canada a great country in which we live, but to be proactive in ensuring future generations will also benefit. As our ancestors gave up everything they knew to venture to this often harsh land, knowing full well that they probably could never go back and see their relatives again, yet determined to look to the future to create something new for themselves and their families, so should we be diligent in ensuring this land remains free and open to all. Citizenship carries a responsibility in joining others to create and maintain justice. To the church in Galatia, Paul urged those who came to know and follow Christ to guard their faith so that it did not slip into indifference. Also, he urged the faithful to be open to anyone who was seeking to join the worshiping community. Never mind, he said, the background or the financial position or the past of the seeker, as all men and women were a special creation of a loving God. It was not a popular message in his day. It's often not a popular message today that everyone has the equal rights to the life that we live. So I ask again, where were your ancestors in 1867? Mine were in Norway, England, Ireland, and the United States. They came and joined with your ancestors to form this union the nation we love. So perhaps this Christmas, yeah, Christmas, Canada Day, a little ahead of my time, perhaps this Canada Day, we can concentrate on the blessings this country bestows on us as a result of our ancestors' efforts, their faith, their commitment, and their willingness to go through tough times so their children would have a better life. So happy Canada Day, and may it be a weekend of counting our blessings and leaving for a time our complaints and our irritations behind us. O oh, Canada, we do indeed stand on guard for thee. And what a wonderful thing it is. Let us pray. So much easier, O oh God, to complain, to be irritated, to look at the things that don't work. And yet on this day of all days, we want to look at the faith of others their willingness to risk all in actions that people said were bound to fail so that we could be here this day. Help us to be people motivated, filled with love, filled with a sense of opportunity and the hope for this land. And may we indeed be a blessed and blessing people. For you have blessed us so much, O oh God, and asked us to be the hands and the feet to offer to others that they too may know this life. In the name of Christ, amen.